The future belongs not to men, but to supermen. Humanity needs to evolve beyond its current state. The journey from being like animals to becoming like gods is marked by gradually deepening and expanding our consciousness, with semen retention playing a crucial role in this process. Each kingdom cannot understand the expanded consciousness of the next higher kingdom because it lacks the ability to comprehend it. To an animal, a human is just another animal. Similarly to a purely intellectual human, a superhuman will seem just like any other human. It requires spiritual faculties to even vaguely sense the transcendent superiority of the superman. By practicing semen retention and overcoming our fleshly desires, we gradually attain the status of a superman. As Apollonius of Tiana describes, we become men dwelling on the earth and yet not of it. Many people share personal stories of spiritual growth, unlocking psychic abilities like clairvoyance, dream travel, or heightened intuition. Connecting deeply with oneself and expanding consciousness are advanced psychological functions that need a special kind of energy from the nervous system. This special kind of energy can be harnessed through semen retention and transmutation. If you are a retainer, here is a goldmine of insights that has been hidden from you that you can use to further develop your knowledge and ultimately unlock all of the benefits of semen retention. And it is gathered from the father of all semen retention books, The Coiled Serpent by C.J. Van Vliet. Stay with us until the end and you'll discover how secret societies and ancient teachings such as occultism, meaning hidden science, the Rosicrucians, Freemasons, the School of Pythagoras and more, as well as ancient scriptures like the Book of Thoth, alchemy, and mythology, all promote and require semen retention as the key to unlocking your stagnant, extraordinary capabilities. Human evolution has been stagnant for thousands of years. Our physical bodies have deteriorated, and our character, emotions, and motivations haven't improved. Despite our advances in culture, society is plagued by sexual abuses, widespread prostitution, frequent abductions and seductions, and sex-driven entertainment. Many people mistakenly equate the growth of our civilization with true evolutionary progress, but they are not the same. Modern society often ignores and stifles our inner growth blocking the higher energy we can harness through semen retention, which is essential for true evolution. Humans have transformed a minor hunger impulse inherited from animals into an overwhelming desire that's difficult to control. Overstimulated by this desire, people have sought various ways to satisfy it, often through non-reproductive sexual acts. However, every such act misuses sexual energy. Depleting the life force needed for developing higher faculties, this misuse has hindered our progress. When humanity became addicted to non-reproductive sexual acts, we became stagnant in our evolution. Only by overcoming this deadlock and practicing semen retention and transmutation can we move towards achieving the greater faculties and powers that evolution promises. In some higher animals, sexual activity is reduced to a single act during the mating season, which often occurs only once a year. For humans, reducing sexual activity to only a few occasions for reproduction is necessary for evolution to continue. Our bodies produce semen as storage of life force, but evolution demands that, except for limited reproductive use, this force be retained within the body for regeneration. Modern humanity faces a choice strive towards the radiant summit of higher evolution or slide into the easy but limiting shadows of lower desires. We must consciously support evolution and work towards becoming superhuman or risk undoing evolutionary progress and descending to a subhuman state. The serpent is the monster to be overcome. This is your biggest enemy while on semen retention but if you can tame it by using your will, you can reduce its power. He can control the wild and unruly reptile within himself by resisting its bad desires. With his willpower, he can make it obedient again. Once tamed, this hidden power will help him progress on the path of evolution. Indeed, when conquered, 
the serpent becomes a means of life. Instead of the serpent controlling the life force of man, it will then supply him with the greatest factor that can lead to a higher human existence. Records of serpent symbolism in some form or another are found in all parts of the world, especially of heroes who conquer the evil serpent. There can be no doubt that these legends symbolize the necessity of man's victory over the domineering influence of sex. From the earliest times, folklore seems to have connected the serpent with the sexual function. When the serpent is uncoiled and upright, or standing on its tail, it is mastered and represents goodness. The victory over the serpent symbolizes the mastery of one's own desires and impulses leading to personal growth and the development of higher faculties. This inner transformation is key to achieving a higher state of being. Man is truly human only when he conquers his natural desires through his spirit. The human spirit comes from the divine, while the body, with its various desires and passions, is made of matter. When we retain semen, we retain the most divine matter within our body, hence strengthening the spirit. If we wish to become spiritually developed, we must become rid of our sensuality and passions. If the spirit is to increase in power, the flesh must be subdued. However, to subdue the flesh does not mean that the body should be despised, stunted or neglected. We can help evolution, not by neglecting the body, but by disciplining and purifying it, by bringing its vibrations up to a higher standard, by refining and subliming it, and so heightening its powers as to make it sensitive and responsive to all the manifestations of the spirit. The body is not to be put off, it is to be made spiritual. The living flesh itself becomes spiritualized in proportion to the inner growth of its bearer. By aligning our physical and spiritual selves, we can enhance our evolutionary progress making our bodies more attuned to the higher purposes of our existence. This harmonious integration of body and spirit is essential for true human development and the realization of our highest potential. Looking back over evolution, we see different stages. The mineral kingdom is still dormant within the earth, the vegetable kingdom is connected to the earth, feeding through its roots and the animal kingdom is like a small child under nature's close supervision, guided by instinct. Instinct controls their sexuality, allowing it to express only during mating seasons for reproduction. Humanity, however, has moved beyond instinct. Nature has withdrawn her guiding hand from us and given us the mind, an individualized part of her own intelligence. Therefore, we can't blame our strong sexual urges on instinct, as we've evolved past that influence. The problem lies within ourselves, specifically in how we've misused our minds. Instead of using our reasoning power wisely, we have focused on self-serving and distorting our sexual lives. Reducing our desires directly increases our inner strength and happiness. Semen retention is essential for diminishing these desires and finding contentment in the present moment. As long as our desires clash with the universal law, we experience pain. This idea has been echoed by the greatest thinkers, mystics, and spiritual leaders throughout history. For anyone seeking to evolve and achieve true happiness, there comes a time when desires must starve, the animal passions must die. This inner transformation is essential for true human development and the realization of our highest potential. The semen retention practitioner feels spiritual joy, which is superior to material pleasure, exceeding it a thousand times. He looks upon the lower satisfactions of life as stranglers of the real joys. When the elating joy from the inner source has been once tasted, mere pleasure will become not only uncraved for, but simply and literally repulsive. Then all the childish pleasures of the world will fade away in the joy of spiritual life. They who have cast away passion will reach the highest joy. In most people, the senses are not controlled by the mind, but, on the contrary, are allowed to dominate it. Yet, it is known that observation through physical senses is limited. 
To be immune to the attractions of the senses is to invite into expression spiritual powers. The more the spirit increases in power, the more it is detached from sensible objects. Then it finds that beyond all physical sensations is a bliss compared to which the pleasures of the senses are like those of children's playthings. This higher joy surpasses all material pleasures and leads to a deeper, more fulfilling existence. By transcending physical desires and focusing on spiritual growth, individuals can achieve a state of lasting contentment and inner peace. While left to themselves, the glands perform their tasks instinctively, according to nature's needs, in a manner which the most learned can neither understand nor explain. Their activity is backed by an intelligence that is not equaled by the greatest intellect of man. As long as we practice pure semen retention and don't interfere with our glands, our glands then produce and contribute to the processes of life and evolution. Modern men have interfered with nature's normal stimulations and with the normal functioning of glands. With artificial excitations, he has forced some glands to serve his pleasure, to work overtime, to overproduce secretions, especially he has overstimulated the glands that are connected with nutrition and with sex, particularly with sex. Apart from giving rise to the development of the secondary sexual characters, they are essential for physical and mental manhood and womanhood. The testes secrete substances which pass into the circulation and are of immense importance in the development of the organism. These substances are the internal secretions, which also add enormously to a man's magnetic and spiritual force. The tragedy is that by every act which disposes of some external secretion, the formation of the internal is undoubtedly interfered with. The prominent part played by the internal secretions of the sex glands of both men and women in every phase of individual development has been discovered only in modern times. This new knowledge confirms the idea that in order to make possible an advancement in evolution, more and more of the life force must be taken away from generative activity and turned into regenerative channels. Undoubtedly, the more semen retained in the body, the greater fullness of life, health and power are experienced. This understanding underscores the importance of semen retention for enhancing both physical vitality and spiritual growth. Towering above any organization or occupation of ordinary humans, there seems to have existed, and still may exist, a secret society of men possessing superhuman powers, a brotherhood consisting of some of the highest evolved individuals of the race that practices semen retention. Although very few authentic records about them can be found, there is evidence that they used a super-Masonic symbolism, carefully kept from crystallizing into a mere ceremony. They employed a super-alchemic hermetic system, not requiring laboratory experiments, a super-occultism, enabling them to be consciously active on other planes of existence than the physical, and a super-science, giving them an understanding of the workings of nature's finest forces behind all natural phenomena. According to this viewpoint, the true Rosicrucian Brotherhood consisted of a limited number of highly developed adepts who taught the mystery of human regeneration. This regeneration was achieved through the transmutation of the base elements of man's lower nature into the gold of spiritual realization. Here is their message. Instead of governing the sensuous, man became involved in sensuosity. He fell from spirit into matter, and it is now the object of his efforts to regain his former position. He is still engaged in the battle of the sensuous against the spiritual. He wants to become spiritualized, but his body attracts him to the sensuous by a thousand charms. His power of returning depends entirely on his power to subdue everything that renders obscure his true inner nature. The Book of Thoth contained the secret processes by which the regeneration of humanity was to be accomplished. It taught that no man can be saved without regeneration, and that this regeneration or spiritual rebirth is an escape from the delusions of the body, which has, with massive matter, blocked the senses and crammed them full of loathsome lust. It is possible to free oneself from these ills, namely by semen retention, the power against desire. 
just throw out of work the body's senses, and thy divinity shall come to birth. Then passion and desire withdraw, and thus it is that man does speed thereafter upwards to the harmony. The whole school of Pythagoras made pure semen retention one of its leading virtues. The main end and design of his philosophy was to disengage the mind from the bonds of the body and to free the soul from the fetters of sense. This is evident from his exhortation. Fight and overcome thy foolish passions, be sober and chaste. And once when Pythagoras was asked when one might indulge in sex, he replied, whenever you want to be weaker than yourself. Of sensual passion, Socrates would say, avoid it resolutely. It's not easy to control yourself once you meddle with that sort of thing. And his own self-control was shown by his deeds, yet more clearly than by his words. All told, the Socratic philosophy bids the heart turn from the temporal to the eternal, and it does so by sublimating erotic passion. In the mystic rites initiated, life's best delight I place in chastity alone. Euripides the mystery of the mastery of man over himself, of suppressing the old man and of vitalizing the spiritual principle, has been the central idea around which have been built most of the religious, metaphysical and ritualistic systems. The ultimate design of the mysteries, according to Plato, was to lead to a perfect enjoyment of spiritual good. The neophyte was taught that a conservation of the life energy and a refusal to expend it in generation would vitalize and vivify body and mind and give spiritual powers. The true object of the Masonic fraternity is an attempt to achieve the moral regeneration of the human race. It recognizes that in every man there is a ray, which ever struggles upward amid the obstructions of the passions. It teaches that one law of our own nature, speaking through every nerve and fiber, every force and element of the moral constitution, is that we must govern our sensual appetites, and also that this is not the mere enactment of arbitrary will, but the dictate of infinite wisdom. Freemasons emphasize the importance of semen retention. For the beholding of the hidden things shalt thou forsake the things of the flesh. Dionysus, Epistle to Timothy. With our physical senses alone at our command, none of us can hope to reach beyond gross matter, which veils our internal vision and muffles our internal hearing. But there are certain faculties latent within the constitution of man which, if they become developed, call a higher scale of internal senses into activity. These may enable him to hear, see, taste and smell things which far surpass the powers of perception of the external senses. In every human being, there are such latent faculties by means of which he may acquire for himself knowledge of the higher worlds, and by which he may prove to his own satisfaction that the supernatural is only the natural in an extraordinary grade. The capacity to respond to spiritual vibrations has almost entirely been lost as a result of the sexual perversions of the race. All sexual intercourse is forbidden in practical occultism. The occultist exemplifies a progressive stage of balanced evolutionary growth towards superhumanity. Abundant physical vigor scientific understanding, artistic inspiration, philosophic speculation, religious adoration, intuitive receptivity, mystic contemplation, yogic concentration, magic willpower, plus other still more wonderful abilities are all acquired by the successful occultist, each to an extent beyond the comprehension of those who seek to specialize in any single faculty. The sooner the animal sexual affinities are given up, the sooner will come the manifestation of the higher occult powers. Helena Blavatsky There is an intelligent ordering force in the universe. It is your duty to manifest this fire from within you into the world. For advanced evolutionary growth, passion must be conquered and the generative organs be used for generation only. In other words, all the sex force not actually used for the perpetuation of the species must by semen retention and transmutation be made available for higher evolutionary attainment. Thank you so very much for watching. War in my mind I'm trying to fight a war in my mind I don't know who's the winner tonight but